In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can build a public facing website for each of your events. Our event website tool is fully customizable so you can add your own pictures, text, videos, links to social media, whatnot. Um, the website is a single page site that your viewers could use to scroll down and they can view it on any kind of device, whether it be a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. So we're going to go into the event dashboard and click on the event website button. And once you're inside of the event website tool, you can first of all see first of all see that we have added some default panels to the event website. You can always remove, uh, edit, change, move these panels wherever you would like. For example, this first panel at the top, uh, we added an image panel, which you can uh, control by using the controls on the right hand side. You can move it to the top, the bottom, you can move it up or down one panel. You can edit the text, you can upload a different image, you can even remove the panel. Um, you can also add new panels by clicking on the add new panel button at the top of the page here. You can add image panels, all sorts of text panels, and additional panels like locations, galleries, schedules, and video panels. And we've already added one of these to the site, but you can add more if you wish. So I'm gonna scroll down, and as you're gonna see, next to each panel are the controls for the panel. To move it, modify the text, the background colors, as well as remove the panel. Here's the location panel. Um, you can add the location uh, address, the background color, or remove it. Here's the RSVP panel. You can change the headline color, um, and we'll go into more detail on RSVP in another video. Um, for the gallery panel, you can uh, modify the text and upload an image for each item in the gallery. You can create a schedule for your event here. You can um, add uh, uh, new items to the schedule and uh, modify those. You can up add a video link uh, to a panel. You can have a follow us panel to link to uh, your social media accounts. Um, here's a countdown panel that you can add and modify that counts down to the event date. And finally, there's a panel for your footer. And I'm just gonna go into this real quick, click on the text uh, link, and I can modify my text color by clicking on the text icon there and then just dragging to whatever color I wanna choose in the color picker there. I'm gonna create a darker font and then I'm going to type in the text that I want to appear in my footer right here. And again, this is just uh, just to give you an example of uh, making mod easy modifications to um, a text field on the event website. Note that if you are cutting and pasting uh, text directly from something like Microsoft Word um, or a similar word formatting program, this may introduce formatting that causes issues. So to avoid this, you should first copy and paste um, any, anything into a text editor tool like Notepad for Windows or Text Edit for Mac. That will remove the formatting and then you can copy and paste from there into this area so that any of that invisible formatting does not break your website. So now it's a little dark, the background color is, so we're gonna click on background color, we're gonna lighten that up, make it a lighter gray. There we go, that's about right. Um, I'm gonna click on save, and now we've got a nice um, mellow footer at the bottom of our page. Um, we're gonna scroll back to the top and show you some more settings at the top here. So, um, first of all, you can view the live website here, but our website is not live right now. By default, uh, the website status is always offline. Um, me offline meaning it can't be, it's not active, it's not live and cannot be, can't, cannot be viewed. Um, to turn it online, you just click on that radio button right there, online, website is live and can be viewed. So I'm gonna save this to put our event website online. And now if I click on the view live website button, it will show me what the live website is gonna look at. And if you noticed, the uh, header information there sticks to the top um, so that somebody can always go back to the home page or click on the contact page or the social sharing buttons. And again, here's how you would add new panels to the event website using the new panel button. We're gonna click, click on the uh, panel with image on the left. We've just added that panel to our website and I'm going to move this panel down because I want it to appear a little bit further down in my website. And I'm going to move it one more time. 
There's that panel, I can start now start making edits to it, uh, but I'm gonna remove it for now. I'm going to go back up. And now we're going to adjust some of the settings for the website. So we're gonna click on view settings and the first thing you can uh, adjust is the website address. By default, we give the website an address with just numbers in it, but you can change all that uh, area where the numbers occur. Uh, so this is the area that you can customize. Please do not add the www.prefix to the website address. Do not add .com after it. Simply add something, uh, 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 customize it with letters and numbers, um, no symbols, no spaces, please. So I'm just gonna customize it with Madison Lunches and click on Save. And if I click on View Settings here, here is my website address. And if I copied and pasted that into a web browser address window, uh, it would pull up the website. So that's how you customize the website address. The next thing you can add is password protection. Um, pr it provides a privacy filter. So click on edit if you wanna add a password. And passwords can only contain letters, numbers, and those symbols that are displayed there. Again, no spaces, please. And once we uh, add this, uh, people who visit the site must enter in a password before they can view the site. So, um, we're going to go to the website and you can see right here, uh, the privacy filter is enabled. We are going to view the live website and you can see um, it doesn't let us into the site. I have to submit a password first. So I'm gonna submit the password and that pulls up the website for me. So that's how you can password protect your websites if you need to. We're going to go back into the settings area and disable the password. I'm gonna take that off the next thing you can do is you can customize the website font choices right here. Um, basically, this headline, subheads, body content, and caption fonts, you can customize here. So we're gonna click on the edit button next to headlines, and I'm gonna select something other than Open Sans Regular. I'm gonna select Leto Bold. Um, for my subheads, I'm going to use another one. I'm gonna use the Roboto Slab Regular. And as you can see, there are a variety of website or uh, font styles that you can choose from, um, from more traditional and classic to a bit more modern to um, even some scripts and um, handwriting type fonts. And finally, for my captions, I'm also gonna make that Roboto Slab Light. And that should give us a fairly modern looking uh, website with those nice, nice clean fonts. But again, uh, we have lots of fonts there for whatever occasion you're planning. And here's what uh, my font selections look like. Very clean and easy to read. And we made sure we provided font, fonts that are web safe um, that are also very easy to read online and on a ha handheld device because our websites um, work great on any type of device from computers and tablets to handhelds. Here is where you can customize things like the title tag and meta description, that's SEO stuff, and you can also add a Google Analytics tracking ID. We talk about those in another video. And finally, we've got the header of our website here. This is sort of the navigation area. Um, it sticks to the top of the site, so people, if people click on home, they'll always be able to return to the top of the site. Um, they can click on RSVP to go immediately go to the RSVP panel and click on contact to send an email. And here are the social sharing buttons that you can place on the site. So that if someone clicks on those, they can immediately share your site on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Here is where you would add the email address that all of the contact uh, uh, emails will be sent from the website too. So just make sure this is an actively monitored email address because any website visitors who click on that contact link will be sending their messages to this address. So I'm gonna click on save. I'm good there. Now I'm going to customize our social sharing links for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So first of all, um, basically uh, this lets vis your site visitors easily post 
about your event on in social media. You can turn on or off each one of these if you wish. I'm gonna leave them all on. And then um, you can create your post headline. Um, only Facebook and LinkedIn will have post headlines. Twitter does not. So this headline will only show up in the Facebook and LinkedIn posts. And of course, these posts will show up in the person who's posting in their feed. Um, I'm gonna uh, edit the post message and this is a max of 140 characters, of course, because of Twitter. Um, we've already added information here, but you can always remove that and add your own uh, mess default message information that will be posted on social media. And just to let you know, um, Facebook and LinkedIn refresh um, this content every 24 to 48 hours. So if you put new contact content in here, it may take them a day or two to pick that information up to post them in the, their messages in the messages that will be posted on those social media sites. Now, both Facebook and LinkedIn also include images in their posts and you can uh, select that image here. So I'm going to click on select file and I'm going to pull an image off of my computer. This is the image I think we're going to use as the main image for our website. Pretty cool sort of jungle bridge image. Um, lots of symbolism there. Um, so we're going to add that um, to our to any of the Facebook and LinkedIn posts that people will add from the website. And you can use the plus or the minus keys here to zoom in and zoom out. You can also um, drag the image around. And once you're finished and like where it's at, click on the green crop button and that image will be saved. And uh, if you close and reopen this form, you will see the new default image, but it has been saved. So I'm gonna click on save and then just to prove it to you, I'm gonna click on social sharing and you'll see here's that new image that will be posted whenever somebody posts to LinkedIn or Facebook. And let's go to the live website and I'll show you what those all those links look like. Here, here's the home and the RSVP stuff. If somebody clicks on uh, Facebook, actually I'm gonna click on Twitter here first and it'll open up a page here so that uh, you can tweet that. Um, I don't think I'm logged into my Facebook or my LinkedIn accounts right now, so it may just send me to a login page. Yeah, it does. But if I if I log in, um, or if I if I already were logged in, it would just take me to a page where I could uh, po add post information to put that on my uh, feed. And here are the links to the RSVP panel and the contact panel, which would pull up my uh, email uh, uh, program. Um, and that is basically how you can initially set up your event website. But we have lots of other videos for using all of the panels and how you can customize all of the panels inside of your website. So make sure to check out those and please let us know if you have additional questions.